Welcome to my channel please like and subscribe, so you will be the first to view latest informations. As a New York grand jury investigating Donald Trump seems poised to expire, questions have emerged about what could now occur to the high-profile crook inquiry into the former U.S. president. The six-month unique grand jury, which began underneath former Manhattan District lawyer Cyrus Vance Jr. in late 2021, and persisted below the present-day DA, Alvin Bragg, reportedly investigated discrepancies in the Trump family's valuation of actual estate. Trump the hero for anti-abortion movement after bending Supreme Court room his wearisome tendencies, overwhelmingly endorsed that the investigation will conclude, except any crook prices towards Trump. The two pinnacle prosecutors helming this inquiry, Mark Pomerantz and Kerry Dunn, all at one stop in February, indicating discord between investigators and Bragg. The New York Times posted Pomerantz's resignation letter in March, in which he wrote that Vance had directed the group to current proof to a grand jury, and two are trying to find an indictment of Mr. Trump and different defendants as quickly as reasonably possible. But Bragg, who took workplace in January, reportedly assessed their case and disagreed. Despite these reports, Bragg has insisted that the investigation continues. As everybody who has labored on crook instances in New York knows, New York County has grand juries sitting all the time Bragg stated in a prior statement. There is no magic at all to any formally set dates. But quite a few veteran attorneys stated they do not assume the investigation will end result in any costs, no matter these pronouncements. Some stated that they weren't all that surprised, given the turbulent tendencies of late around the investigation. Nothing was going to happen, because why else would the prosecutors who have been running the case leave? Nima Ramani, president of West Coast Trial Lawyers, advised The Guardian. I suppose the resignations communicate volumes. Rahami stated that the nature of grand juries regularly virtually favors the prosecution. Only a majority of grand jurors want to vote in favor of an indictment, not the entire panel. More, the standard for returning an indictment is not all that high, simply legally enough proof of a crime, and whether or not there is sensible motive to consider that the accused character dedicated that crime. So, if prosecutors favor an indictment, they can almost constantly get one. When you present evidence for the grand jury, it's a definitely one-sided affair, Rahami said. If you prefer to get the indictment and you choose to win, you'll get it. Rebecca Royf, a former prosecutor in the Manhattan District Attorney's Workplace who is now a professor at New York Law School, stated that the resignations of Pomerantz and Dunn published some variety of disagreement about the energy of the case. The seasoned prosecutors may have believed that they had sufficient for an indictment, and Bragg would possibly have disagreed. Prosecutors seem to be at evidence and from time to time come to distinct conclusions about the power of the case, the knowledge of going forward, and how to work out their discretion, Royf said. So it appears like that's what happened.